Yo, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to UndergroundWellness.com. Again, we are talking about the book Wheat Belly by Dr. William Davis. Go out and get this book, and most importantly, read this book. It's really funny, it's really good, and it'll blow your minds. Last week, we talked about gluten and how the wheat that we consume today is completely different than the wheat that even your great-grandmother consumed. It's changed tremendously. We're going to move away from the gluten side of it, and we're going to talk about how wheat is making us fat, and it's actually worse than consuming sugar. A lot of people out there are just like nodding or, or shaking their heads going, what? Wheat is worse than sugar? I'm going to prove it to you right now. If you don't believe me, do your own research, of course. And so today we're going to talk about blood sugar regulation, um, insulin resistance, visceral fat, all of this fun stuff. And of course, I'm going to break it down so everybody can understand. And so when I was in college taking nutrition courses, and even after, you know, reading different magazines and whatnot, um, you know, they always said, you want to get rid of all the simple sugars, the glucose, the fructose, uh, table sugar, which would be uh, sucrose, which is a combination or a pairing of glucose plus, plus fructose. Get rid of all that stuff and replace it with complex carbohydrates, such as grains and breads and these things that have fiber in them and whatnot. And we did that, and what's happened since? We've gotten fatter and fatter and fatter, as well as having a whole lot of other problems. And there is a reason for that, and I'll break that down to you right now. So, wheat itself is 70% carbohydrates. Of that 70%, 75% is something called amylopectin. 25 is amylose. So now let's consider how these two things are digested, and let's talk about amylose first. Now you have something in your mouth, as well as producing your stomach called amylase. So amylase is the enzyme that breaks down amylose. So you consume the wheat, it starts to break down the amylose in the mouth, it breaks it down in the stomach. However, it doesn't do it as efficiently as we'd like it to. So some of that amylose is going to make its way into your colon, and of course you're going to go ahead and, and poop it out. Amylopectin is very similar. It's going to be broken down by the amylase as well, and it's going to make its way through the body. But there are three different types of amylopectin, and the difference between the three is very relevant in terms of your blood sugar and you putting on fat from consuming wheat. Now, the three types of amylopectin. First off, you've got amylopectin C. This is what you're going to find in beans. This amylopectin C is not very easily digested, so you consume beans, the amylase in the mouth as well as in the stomach don't break it down very efficiently. A lot of that amylopectin C ends up in your colon. It feeds the colon bacteria and you get gassy, right? So that's amylopectin C. Amylopectin B is what you're going to find in potatoes as well as bananas. It's, uh, it's broken down and digested uh, more easily or easier than amylopectin C, but nowhere as good as amylopectin A. Amylopectin A is what we find in wheat. And amylase has a high affinity for amylopectin A. It breaks it down very, very easily. So it takes that chain of simple sugars, which makes that complex carbohydrate, and rips them apart by way of digestion. So when that gets down to your small intestine, what happens to all of that resultant sugar? It's going to make it into your bloodstream. Now, when all, you get this big bang of blood sugar or sugar into your bloodstream, what happens? We have to remember, blood sugar is very toxic to most of the cells in your body. So your body has to go, hey, there's, there's way too much sugar in the bloodstream. Uh, it's going to ruin our cells. This is why, like, diabetics who can't control their sugar very well, they have, like, amputations of their limbs. They might go blind because that excess uh, sugar is toxic and it's actually frying their cells. So the body has to have somewhere to put it. So in order to put that sugar somewhere, your pancreas says, hey, blood sugar is high, let's go ahead and crank up insulin. So your insulin, you know, there's receptors on your liver as well as on your, your muscles and your fat cells, and it's going to go ahead and take um, uh, sugar out of the bloodstream. It's going to store it in the liver, it's going to store it in the muscles, and it's also going to convert that sugar into fat. So insulin is one of the primary hormones that stores fat. We can talk about leptin and all that stuff on another day. It's also in my book. And so what happens is because the sugar's going up and you have so much insulin, insulin is that fat storing hormone, you end up with something called a wheat belly. 
that visceral fat. You'll notice people who drink a lot of beer or who, who eat a lot of grains tend to pack fat on right here. Now this belly fat makes inflammatory chemicals. Most people don't know that your fat stores are an endocrine gland. They're just like your adrenals, just like your pancreas. They make hormones, it makes chemicals. So your fat is actually doing stuff. It's just not hanging out there. And so these chemicals, as well as something called adenopectin, I believe that is adenopectin. Adenopectin, oh, I'm sorry, adiponectin, that's the word. I knew something wasn't right about that. Adiponectin. Adiponectin is secreted by your fat cells, but it makes us more sensitive to insulin. You want to be insulin sensitive, but when you've got all this visceral fat growing right here, you actually reduce your production of adiponectin. This is going to make you more insulin resistant, as well as these inflammatory chemicals are going to contribute to the insulin resistance. Now you've got a major problem. You've got all of this insulin hanging around in there, so you're going to get all this fat storage, which is going to make you an even bigger belly, and it turns into this nasty, vicious cycle right here. So let's talk about sugar for a second. Now, there's something called the glycemic index, and what the glycemic index does is it compares this stuff right here, how different carbohydrates affect your blood sugar levels. Now, it's on a, a ranking system, so the higher the glycemic index score, the bigger the impact that particular food is going to have on your blood sugar. And so, I've got this book right here. And you can look for all kind of different glycemic indexes online. There's a lot of resources for this, but it's an old book that I have. It's called The New Glucose Revolution. I had it for, for many years. And I looked up the glycemic index of these different foods. Whole wheat bread from wheat flour, a 77. It's a pretty high glycemic index score. You're really breaking down that amylopectin, converting the sugar increase in insulin. That's why you get this high score. It's the amylopectin A. Wonder Bread, it's an 80. So we do all this talking about, oh, you know, I eat wheat bread instead of Wonder Bread, but it's really not having that big of a difference to your blood sugar. I'm not encouraging to you, you, to, you to consume uh, Wonder Bread by any means, but the whole wheat bread ain't that much better. But what's really interesting about this is sucrose, table sugar. You've been told to reduce our table sugar, rightfully so. The problem is that we've been told to replace it with more wheat. But the thing is, is that the glycemic index score of sucrose is a 68. It's actually less than the whole wheat bread. This is what's going on with our stupid food guide pyramids and plates and all that stuff. We're being told to consume this in place of this, and it's just making things worse. But again, I'm not saying that eating this is actually good for you. And then one thing that came up, and I was going to do a whole video on this, but probably not, is gluten-free. The gluten-free stuff is actually worse in terms of blood sugar than the actual whole wheat bread. So if you're trying to drop weight and you're like, oh, I'm just going to stay away from the gluten, but I'm just going to eat gluten-free breads and gluten-free this, that, and the other, well, that's a 79. Whole wheat bread was a 77. The gluten-free stuff's actually worse. And so all of this stuff, I was going to go through what happens here as far as your blood sugar sky, uh, going sky high, that insulin coming out and making it drop, and you get really hungry, and then you eat some more sugar, and it goes right back up. And when I say sugar, I do mean wheat at the same time. And then it goes up, then you get insulin, and the blood sugar crashes down an hour later, then you're hungry again, and you're at the vending machine, and you know all of this stuff. This is why when you eat a diet that's high in these complex carbohydrates, these bagels, this, these pretzels, you know, all this low-fat crap, you're hungry all the time. You're spiking your insulin levels, you're spiking your blood sugar, you're giving yourself visceral fat, you're making all these inflammatory chemicals, you're reducing your adiponectin, you're increasing your insulin resistance, and you're making yourself fat. And real quickly, this is not the only thing that makes you insulin resistant. Something I write about in my book. We have tunnel vision when it comes to this. We just blame insulin resistance on food. And food is a part of it. You know, it's sugar, it's polyunsaturated fat or PUFAs, it's alcohol consumption, but there are other lifestyle factors that are going to make you insulin, insulin resistant as well, such as toxicity, you know, something called obesogens. These are chemicals that make you insulin resistant and as a result make you fat. Uh, what else is there? There's stress. Stress can make you insulin resistant. Lack of sleep, just one night of sleep deprivation can make you as insulin resistant the following day as a diabetic. And so we have to keep this stuff in mind. It's not just the food. 
Food is playing a huge role in this, but it's also the whole lifestyle in general, which means, which is one of the reasons why we have to have a more holistic approach to these type of things. And so that is my presentation for the day. Wheat makes you fat. It's worse than sugar. Try not to eat it or severely limit your consumption of it. Go to darksideoffatloss.com and buy my phenomenal ebook, Dark Side of Fat Loss. If you just want to read the first chapter, go to darksidepreview.com. Click that button right down there, that link, and uh, you'll get that first chapter for free. I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.